this video, I will show you in detail how I painted Eddie Redmayne, who plays Newt Scamander in the movie Fantastic Beasts. So the new part, Crimes of Grindelwald, was released some time ago, and this really inspired me to paint Newt with coffee. So the reference picture I used was this one, and I started off by making a sketch that will be accurate enough to actually make it look like him, but still be big enough to work on it with the coffee. The sketch is a really important part in making the painting look realistic, so be sure to spend enough time on the sketch. Next it was time for me to mix the coffee into shades that I could use to paint with, and if you're interested in the exact ingredients of my coffee mixtures, I have dedicated an entire video to that, where I show you what I use, so the link to that video will be in the screen somewhere, and also in the description box below. Before I started working on Newt, I wanted to test a new technique where I put a layer of color pencil down as a base before I go on top of that with the coffee. To test this out, I drew two eyes and I started painting the first one with the coffee straight away without any pencil layers. This is what I've always done before when I painted with coffee, but I noticed that it takes a lot of layers to get the darkest values in and you won't be able to keep the small details. For the second eye, I started off with a base layer of color pencils and I used those to put down the darkest values and add details, like the fine lines in the iris and the eyelashes. I also put down some of the midtones with a warmer brown color and I noticed that I like to use a cross-hatching technique where I put down small strokes in opposite directions of each other. I think this gave it a more textured look and that will be great for the coffee on top of it because that will be really textured too. Overall I think the second eye looks a lot more interesting so I'm glad I tried this out and I will apply this new technique to the big painting as well. The color pencils that I am using are Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils in the colors Bister, Noga and Burned Umber. Then it was time to start putting the color pencil base down on the paper. I started with the darkest areas like the eyes, the nose, the eyebrows and around the mouth. I only applied the darkest colors where I was sure that it would be really dark, because the coffee on top of it later will make it even darker. Color pencil is really hard to erase, so I tried to layer the tones and gradually build up the values. The paper I'm using is Kenson watercolor paper, which is essential if you are working with coffee, because the coffee behaves just like watercolor, and if you are using normal thin paper it will wrinkle and it will form puddles of paint all over the place. So be sure to use watercolor paper if you give coffee painting a try. My focus in this painting was on his facial features, like his eyes. But still, I had to give some tones to his hair to not make it look flat. So I applied some pencil strokes in the direction of the individual curls, but I didn't pay attention to all of the details, because that would have taken ages. Same goes for the jacket he is wearing. I wanted to give it a rough texture, so I made the cross-hatching pattern a bit bigger. Now it's time to add the coffee! I like to start on a part of the painting that is less important, so I can get warmed up a little bit and get used to my coffee shades. I'm starting off with a light tone and just pushing the paint around on the paper so it gets where I want it to be. When I felt more confident with my tones, I moved on to the face and started to build up the layers. It is important to let the layers dry in between, otherwise they will bleed into each other just like watercolor does. Another reason why I wanted to paint Newt with coffee is that I think his natural skin tone matches perfectly with the warm tones of the coffee. Besides that, when the coffee dries it leaves a really interesting texture and you can soften it to some extent for smooth transitions for instance on the skin. But in some places I purposely left the coffee texture, for instance on his lips. And I think this creates a lot of detail or at least the illusion of detail, which makes the piece come alive so much more. Furthermore, Newt has a lot of natural freckles, 
which were a lot of fun to recreate with the coffee. A quick tip for when you are painting with coffee is that you can erase parts or make them lighter by taking your brush and dipping it into clean water. Now dry it on tissue but make sure it's still a bit wet and now you can go over the areas you want to make lighter and the brush will absorb some of the coffee. To make some details in his hair I took a toothpick and lightly scratched away some of the dark paint. This will leave a light stripe which gives you the ability to make fine details. After a lot of layers and some finishing touches this painting was finally done. I had so much fun making it and I am really happy of the way it turned out. I really enjoy coffee painting because the tone is so warm and rich and fun fact it smells great. I hope you tried coffee painting yourself and if you have any questions feel free to ask. Thanks for watching!